I'll be honest, at first glance the Magnus Prime doesn't really seem all that appealing. Couple that with the disappointment of not getting an ACK Magnus Prime and well, <laughs> let's just say that I wasn't really looking forward to reviewing this weapon. But after playing with it for a little bit and understanding how it functions, mm, I changed my mind, at least to some degree. Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this secondary weapon. As per the usual, I'll have a cheap build, something affordable that most Tenno should be able to build, but of course we also got a souped up setup with Prime mods, Galvanized mods, Arcanes, basically the works. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly tone, simply because I wanna cover everything that a newer player might need to know. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Magnus Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our usual free shots. The Magnus Prime is a semi-automatic secondary weapon with a head scan attack and an 8 shot magazine really quick on the reload. When it comes to the recoil of the weapon, this one mm, kinda kicks like a mule. This is our usual 15 meter accuracy test, take a look. Shot by shot, no problem whatsoever, you can hit the same point every single time, but unfortunately because of that recoil, if you go to full fire rate like Sue. It does kind of spray the entire screen for the most part. Now, when you do reach full fire rate, it does kind of stabilize a little bit and you can fight your mouse. Have a look. To try to hit basically the same point, but it's not, not exactly super accurate if you're gonna go full fire rate. In order to achieve full fire rate with a semi-automatic weapon such as this one, you have a couple of options. For example, you can bind your fire to your mouse scroll wheel, like so. Or you can use a macro. Careful with macros, however, because Digital Extremes has never really been all too clear on them. Link the cards right now for more details. Their stance is, and I quote, you do so at your own risk. Yeah, I know. Now this weapon has one more trick up its sleeve, which would encourage a high fire rate secondary weapon. Take a look at my buff bar. Keep looking, it'll appear today. Today would be good. Multi-shot is gonna help a lot with this one. Chamber Cascade, you see that? It's a four second buff, time in which you go to 100% ammo efficiency for four seconds, and yes, the buff is refreshable. So as you can see, I got Chamber Cascade, none of my ammo is consuming, and if you get a refresh, you keep on firing, fantastic. Now, a buff such as that one will encourage a high fire rate secondary weapon. Now, what's the chance on hit? We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. I did a little bit of testing. It seems to be around 15 to 20 percent ish, but there's no word officially from the dev. And that's pretty much it for functionality. Let's have a closer look at stats. Mod capacity 60 out of 60. And if your Magnus Prime comes with only 30 out of 30, jump into actions and plug in that Oro King Catalyst. Now, there's always the discussion here is it worth fully building this weapon or not? Because maybe I don't want to invest a catalyst and forma and all that into this weapon. If you want a cool, quirky, gimmicky secondary weapon, yeah. If you want meta, bro, and AoE clear and all of that good stuff and steel path worthiness, you can look towards other secondary weapons, link the cards right now to have something a bit more potent. Moving on, how many format? Six? No, 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 you don't need six. I format six. For the weapon build I'm recommending you, you can get away with something like four. Of course, the arcane slot needs to be unlocked in order to use the weapon's maximum power. As for the excellent slot, I would unlock this one as well. As you saw there, it does kick like a bloody mule. And considering some of the mods and the playstyle that is encouraged by, um, what's it called, the Chamber Cascade buff, I would definitely encourage you go with steady hands. This will make the weapon a whole lot more usable at high fire rates. The reason why I keep mentioning high fire rates is because it's the only real way I can make this weapon somewhat viable. Well, you can make the weapon somewhat viable. More on that later. Accuracy is 16. As you saw, there no problem as long as it's steady. Critical chance is good at 28% and a high critical multiplier at 2.8x. Fire rate is 5.83 by default with a magazine of 8. Noise alarming. Reload on a 1.2 seconds. Not bad, but again, you don't get that much of a magazine to begin with. However, again, chamber cat does help with that one. Riven Dispo 1 out of 5. Now, considering all the mods you can plug into this weapon, considering all the options for builds you have, 
Honestly, Rivens are not worth it. Not on a Dispo 1 out of 5. At least not for the time being. Status chance 28%, which is mm, a little bit on the iffy side. Trigger semi, as you saw. And the damage has been laid out. Impact, puncture, and slash. Totaling 76 per bullet. Not bad. Highest is gonna be impact, but puncture and slash are not trailing too far behind. And the fact that you got these three elements on the weapon will help with damage builds uh, with galvanized shot. You get it. The more statuses you have, the more damage you will do. And speaking about damage, let's have a look at a standard build. Damage with Hornet Strike, multi shot with Battle Diffusion, as well as Lethal Torrent. We got Critical Chance, Critical Damage with Target Cracker, and Creeping Bullseye. One mention, my friends, this is a cheapo setup for newer players, newer Tenno coming into Warframe. Maybe you don't have all the Prime mods, all the Galvanized mods just yet. I want to show you what the weapon can do with a cheapo setup. When it comes to crit, since we did mention crit, let's talk about this. Should you creeping bullseye over pistol gambit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this is the difference from 84 to 61. I think it's 100% worth it, even considering that minus 20% fire rate. Now, when it comes to critical damage, you can drop target cracker. If you still don't have the prime, which is a lot better than this one, you can go for something like sharpened bullets. Now, this one is 75% critical damage. It's better than 60, duh. But it's on kill when aiming for 9 seconds. I wish this was 100%, but it, again, it is an option. And you also have hydraulic crossers that you can use in your option slot. Speaking about option slots, we got two 60-60 mods on the weapon, forming Vital with Frostbite and Pistol Pestilence. Pistol Pestilence is obtained from Corrupted Vore in the Void. It's super easy, no problem whatsoever. You should be getting all the 60-60 Toxin mods when you're farming your Argon Crystals, for example. As for Frostbite, obtained from Spy Missions. Both of these, from the Trade Chat, on PC at the very least, are currently about 10 to 15 plat a pop. The last slot is your option slot. And a lot of you will say, dude, no-brainer impact go for hemorrhage. Not in this case, my friends. Now, hemorrhage needs a fire rate of below 2.5 to get you the max 75% chance per impact proc to apply a slash. In this case, because of how it functions, because of the base fire rate of the weapon, which is set as 5.8, and even if you go with something like critical, well, creeping bullseye in this case, you only bring the fire rate down to 4.67. Basically, you're never really gonna get the full benefit out of hemorrhage. In this case, it's a lot smarter of an idea to go with Carnes Stinger. 90% slash, bringing up the proc priority of slash over impact and also increasing your status chance. It's not the ideal gun to build hemorrhage on, so do bear that one in mind. As for your arcane slot, again, I don't think these are exactly the most new player friendly things, which is why we're gonna keep it out of the standard build, but let's go over them really quick. Deadhead is not bad as long as you're gonna machine gun this secondary weapon and keep rolling into cascade buff. If you're gonna be using your melee as well, obviously dexterity, and if you want the safe choice, you go with Merciless. The reason why Merciless is a safe choice is because Deadhead will only grant its benefit when you actually kill a target with a headshot. If the target dies under the effect of a slash, for example, which we are building, no buff from Deadhead. So do bear that one in mind. Now we're going to be testing out the weapon like so, and then we're going to be moving on to a more maxed out setup. Quick check to make sure that Wisp doesn't have corrosive projection or anything that would skew the test results. We're going to be spawning in those Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120. And the way you want to play with this weapon in order to get some actual power out of it is basically fan the hammer, like so. I don't want to stop firing, ever. Go for headshots, of course, you want to go for headshots, and no, I did not forget about deadly maneuvers, more on that just a bit later. You gotta keep rolling into Cascade, and if you can keep the secondary weapon rolling into Cascade, then it's gonna become a full-blown monster. If you go shot by shot, then reload, it's basically not even worth using, considering all the other secondary options that you have in Warframe. So again, fan that hammer, baby. Roll that scroll or whatever else you desire. And as you can see, it definitely packs a punch. And it's an interesting combat experience as well. You know you gotta keep hitting your targets. And that was performance with a cheapo standard-ish setup. Now I promised I talked about deadly maneuvers. Let's talk about deadly maneuvers. You need to understand how this one works. First of all, this is not exactly the most new player friendly mod. Why? 
This one is only obtained from series 3 of Nightwave and if memory serves me correctly it was at level 7. It's a great mod to have as a gimmick, as a conversation piece or something like that but when it comes to actual gameplay and usability it kind of goes against how the Magnus Prime works. It says the following. On dodge, gain 400, 400 percent headshot critical chance on your next two shots. And you need to understand two things about it. First of all, well, three things. Dodge is this, okay? Any any dodge whatsoever, you can dodge in front to the side. It doesn't really matter. You're gonna get those two stacks. If you miss one of your shots, for example, oh no, mom, I missed. You're gonna expand one of the charges. If you're gonna hit the body of your target, you're not gonna get the benefit either. The only way is to do a dodge and get headshots and as you can see what it went to orange already that's fantastic yes because this one deadly maneuvers applies to the modded critical chance of your weapon not to the base value so it's absolutely sky high amounts of critical chance beautiful but considering how you play with the weapon the fact that you want to go rat a tat tat a tap and keep fanning the hammer fanning the hammer so you get um the cascade buff Going shot by shot and making sure you get a critical chance on every single uh, shot is not exactly in the cards for this one, which is why Deadly Maneuvers, cool as it may be, goes a little bit against the playstyle of the Magnus Prime, and I don't really recommend it, unless, again, you know exactly what you're doing, you know how the mod works, and you also have it, because right now in Warframe, you can't get it. Okay, you cannot obtain it directly from the game, which is why I'm not recommending this one. Let's talk about a maxed out setup. A maxed out setup? Now, of course, we're going to be using Galvanized Diffusion instead of the normal one. We also got Galvanized Shot on this one. Fantastic mod, man. This can add so much damage to your weapon. It's absolutely insane. As long as you manage to keep the buffs up. And, of course, we got Prime Pistol Gambit and Prime Target Cracker. Now, as long as you have Galvanized Shot on your weapon, you can even drop Hornet Strike. That's not a bad idea. But as long as you will be doing normal level content, and by that I mean 100, 150, having that front-loaded damage does make a huge difference when it comes the clear time you can drop this one you can put in something else for example maybe you'd like some lethal torrent maybe you can even go with hemorrhage to get even more slashes on your target from my point of view this is a pretty balanced setup that will get you good results mostly no matter the circumstances again carnage stinger and the two 60 60 Viral mods and secondary head, deadhead. Yes, I went for deadhead because as long as you fan the hammer, you should be able to get kills directly on headshots. Let me show you how this one works now. You will notice quite the difference when it comes to recoil. Now, of course, using arcanes now and galvanized mods, you're gonna need a couple of kills to get the build in full roll. Let's take a look at that. Just chomps through targets like nobody's business, and I'm not even waiting for the slashes to kill it. Of course, I can wait for slashes to kill it if I want to, but that's not the point. The point is, I want to get that buff. Look at the value of the slashes 45,000 and another 26,000. You can look forward to a build such as this. The only question you should ask yourself is this the kind of playstyle that I enjoy or not? Would I actually be playing this weapon like this or not? Because if not, you also have the option to go for Deadly Maneuvers, if you have the mod, of course. And just go shot by shot, pinpoint accuracy, if you're more of a sharpshooter kind of guy. Just dodge, do two shots, destroy your opposition, no problem whatsoever. As soon as you get a slash on this one, you're going to absolutely annihilate whatever stands before you. So it's really up to you. I would encourage fanning the hammer simply because uh, Chamber Cascade is a huge benefit to this weapon. Ah! One last thing, of course, we're gonna bump up everything with Warframe buffs, and for that we're gonna be using the ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime. I will do a separate video on the Magnus Prime, yeah, plus all the crit in the world, just so we can see how high we can stack it. That's gonna be some other time. But for now, the ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime. And of course, Karosa Projection against Grenier, which is the meta way. Don't feel forced into this one, simply use the aura that your Warframe needs. Perhaps your build calls for Energy Siphon, Growing Power, or I don't know, Physique, or whatever else. Also keep in mind that Arcanes are a lot more impactful, so normally, here's what I recommend. You use one Arcane for your gun, or for your weapons in general, and one for your Warframe. So normally one of these slots is taken by something like Energize, for example. But if you want to max out your weapon, you can use something like Arcane Avenger and Arcane Precision. 
Normally this is where I would remind you that, hey, you can use ammo efficiency here and we would change out the arcane. But in this case, considering uh, chamber cascade, we're going to go with precision and avenger. No need for sentinel trick. This is a secondary weapon, so that will not apply. We're going to bump up the level to 100 and however max I can, 160. We're going to be unpausing the target so they can hit me and I can get my buffs. Now, of course, my friends, considering how the weapon worked before, it's gonna work even... Did I not unpause you? Oh, you're just, you're just slow. Gotcha, gotcha, no problem. I thought I didn't unpause him for a second. Look at that. 33,000. I don't even have it fully stacked. And they're just gonna die from the raw damage. Now that I got a few stacks of pro de uh, secondary dead hit. Take a look at that damage. Beautiful, man. Absolutely fantastic. Again, for a playstyle such as this... You roll and you do precision shots, a build centered around more critical chance with deadly maneuvers would be a good idea. But on the other hand, my friends, as I proved in the past several times, heavy duty critical on secondary weapons is just simply not all that hot. While there may be an infinite, infinite number of critical tiers in Warframe, they're simply not powerful enough. It's just simple as that. Once you get past tier 2 or 3, it's kind of pointless to go for even more crit. So do bear that one in mind. Getting back on track a bit more with the Magnus Prime, I love this weapon and I'll tell you why. At first glance it doesn't seem to bring anything new to the table, right? It's another semi-automatic Lex style, let's call it Lex style, is that okay? Lex style secondary weapon. But when you factor in Chamber Cascade and the fact that it changes your gameplay entirely, then it makes it special, at least in my eyes. No, it's not one of the best DPS secondary weapons in Warframe. It can't be. But if you want something cool, quirky, gimmicky, and just a tad different, then definitely go for the AK, uh, <laughs> for the Magnus Prime. Yes, I am missing an AK Magnus Prime. Hopefully, DE will come out with one this year. Thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, my friends, drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. Like, for example, I would like to see that build or that build, or perhaps something totally different. You can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Hey, and if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. Link in the cards right now. But until next time, my friends, bye-bye.